Hi, I'm Keith Severson and welcome to the kitchen. Today it smells like Sunday. We're going to make spaghetti and meatballs. Spaghetti sauce, a deep rich tomato sauce, is known by many names and known very affectionately as red sauce, gravy, or even Sunday sauce. In fact, it's the inspiration for the name of this show. It's a traditional recipe, usually handed down from one to another, and so too today, we're going to make my mom's spaghetti sauce. What we'd like to start with are some bones. I've got a nice rib steak bone from a, a beef steak. I've got a pork chop that I've trimmed. And then this is a little secret ingredient that we'll let you in on. That's an Italian sausage. I've taken the casing off and chopped it up. We're going to go into our nice heavy skillet, a good sized saucepan that's going to hold the entire sauce for you today. So what we're going to do is put these bones in and brown them in the pan. We've got the meat and the bones inside here and they're browning nicely. This is the only time that I am going to put in black pepper. We put in a little salt to season the meat and then some black pepper to season the meat. The rest of my sauce, I don't really add any black pepper. We generally have enough fat in here that I don't need to add any but on occasion, you can add a nice, good quality olive oil just a little bit in here at this point. When I'm adding olive oil like that, I try to add it around the edge of the pan. I don't want to add it right on top of the ingredients that are in the pan. So we've got the meat in the pan, browned nicely. It smells great in here already. We're going to start adding the vegetables. I've got a whole chopped onion, coarsely chopped, and it goes in on top of that. And I'm going to let that cook down for about three minutes. We've got the onions in, they've been in for about three minutes, and then we're going to add the garlic. Three or four cloves, and it depends on how much garlic you like in your dish. I'm a big garlic fan. The next thing is a secret ingredient. This is one of my mom's secret ingredients. It's a, a pepperoncini pepper, cut very finely. Two, three, depending on how hot you want it. This is one of the two heat profiles that we're going to add. The next one is chili flakes, dried chili flakes. This one was particularly hot and so you want to add just a few, half a teaspoon or so. I want to add them at this point because I want the oils from those chilies to come into all of those vegetables before we get all the sauce on top. So I've got those in, keep them stirring and, and cooking down. The onions have sweated, the garlic is coming along nicely. Now I start to add a couple other sort of secret ingredients. From that pepperoncini jar, we're going to add just a little bit of vinegar. Again, teaspoon, nothing more. Now generally your tomatoes are going to be very sweet and there will be plenty of sweetness in the sauce, but I do want to add a little bit of sugar. I'm going to add about a teaspoon of sugar. This is going down on top of all of those vegetables before we've got any sauce in there. And now I'm going to add some red wine. A nice hearty red wine. I generally use a Burgundy, Cabernet, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, or something like that. We're going to use primarily to canned tomato products, but uh, these were so good I found a couple heirlooms and romas, cord and seed and just uh, roughly chopped so it adds a real nice spring flavor for those tomatoes.
got a little bit of a stew going down here in the bottom. So at this point, I want to keep adding herbs and, and flavorings. We've got a bay leaf that'll go in there. And so I'm going to add some dry uh, basil now. I like a lot of basil in, in my spaghetti sauce, so I'm going to use a good, a good handful to this and put it in there. And I want to add my oregano at this point. I'm going to add just about a teaspoon of oregano. I don't want too much in here uh, because it will overpower the entire thing. Next I'm going to add some fresh herbs. This beautiful pile of basil that we've cut. Uh, it just smells great. And again we're putting this in before we start getting all the sauces on top of it so those essential oils and great flavors can come out. And this is Italian parsley, flat leaf parsley. Very springy, very bright, and a wonderful color. Give that a stir. It's beautiful. So this is progressing nicely. We've got all the herbs in here, lots of seasonings, and I'm going to start with the tomato paste next. I want just a small can of tomato paste, good quality tomato paste. If you're a starving college student, you probably will use the cheapest one, 10 for a dollar. And if you travel to Italy, why don't you bring some back for all of us. One of the rules of making Sunday sauce, spaghetti sauce, is every time you add a can, you add a can of water. All right, we've got uh, the tomato paste in, one can of water, uh, uh, just a beautiful array of vegetables, herbs, spices. Ah, and it's smelling great right now. We're going to add some tomatoes. This is a, a box of uh, strained tomatoes straight in. And then I'm going to add a can of tomato sauce. Again, I'm going to get another can of water to add to this. And then we're on our way. The sauce is working really well. The sauce is going and it looks great. Now it's time to start on the meatballs. Spaghetti and meatballs. Again, this recipe is handed down and I've tweaked and stolen and begged and borrowed to get different recipes from restaurateurs and from my mother and family members. One of the secrets is the meat mixture that you start with. I like a one-third mix of ground beef, ground pork, and mild Italian sausage. You could do a hot Italian sausage if you have an adventuresome group, but keep in mind who you're serving for. So you've got the meat mixture ready to go. Then we're going to add one large egg for every pound of mixture. A half to a quarter dried breadcrumbs. You can always make your own. I'm going to add some Pecorino Romano cheese. That's a sheep milk cheese. It's saltier and it's sharper than your Parmesan and so keep that in mind when you're salting. Now I've grated that very finely because I want it to meld in there very nicely. We're making meatballs so I've taken some onion and garlic, sweated them in a little olive oil, but when you do this, cut this very finely. When we're doing the sauce you might cut it a little, deep, a, a little larger, chop it a little bit. So that goes in. And then your fresh herbs. I'd like some basil in there and again some flat leaf parsley. Nice mixture in there. We're going to do a little salt and pepper to taste. Now I'm just going to put a pinch in there as I talked about salt earlier and then some black pepper in here. The bowl looks good just like it is. Now the ideal size for a meatball is somewhere bigger than a golf ball and slightly smaller than a tennis ball. And this is my personal challenge. I always make them too big. So what I do is I use a little uh, ice cream scoop to give me something to shoot for. This is the kind of thing that you mix your meatballs up. You want to take your rings off. Remember where you put those because you're going to get your hands right in there. All right, so as I said, I like to have something a little bit bigger than a golf ball. And I start with my ice cream scoop and it gives me a fighting chance of making the right size meatball. Just gently roll, don't pack too much. You want them kind of loose. You don't want to make them too dense. 
just a little roll neatly arranged on the tray. A baking dish with a little bit of a lip on it. And the last one, perfect. Now we're going to put this into our 350 degree oven for 35 to 40 minutes. And if you made them the right size, they'll be just perfect. Through the magic television, they will come out and look just like this. You can make these early, you can even make them a day ahead. And then reintroduce them in the sauce, get them heated all the way through, and we're ready to put them on the plate. So the meatballs and sauce are done and hot. We've done pasta al dente. This is one of the few pasta sauces that I'll do without taking the starchy pasta water and mixing into the sauce. The sauce is just great the way it is. Nice and hot, I'm going to take a nice ladle of the rich tomato sauce. Down in the bottom of the bowl, we're going to add our hot al dente pasta. Stir and mix to coat. That'll absorb the sauce, get a nice rich color. Beautiful, looks great. Then we're going to go to plate. Give it a twirl. Portion appro appropriately. Add a little dollop of sauce on the top. And a couple of those fabulous meatballs that you did. A little greenery for color around the plate. And a little Parmesan on top for the eye. Some French bread. And a simple salad. Spaghetti and meatballs. I'm Keith Severson, and it smells like Sunday. We finished spaghetti and meatballs, and I'd like you to remember, it's not glass to glass, but soul to soul. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs>